Hello, everybody. Welcome to this Let's Learn Futures webinar series brought to you by Bursa Malaysia uh, Derivatives. So this is uh, Shane Chu from LiveChamp. And today we are very excited to be hosting you this session called Risk and Money Management Strategies for Maximizing Trading Results. Now, as you know, when it comes to trading, risk and money management is of utmost importance because if you don't do proper risk and money management then one time you have an error or the market go against you then you might you know blow your entire account so that's why especially when it comes to futures trading it's even more important for you to do risk and money management because futures is a leverage product and today we have a very experienced speaker who is here with us today to talk about this topic okay he's none other than David Lowe so later I will introduce his background for a little bit all right so if you're here today please let me know if you can hear me see our screen and see my webcam if you can please uh, uh, type yes and maybe tell us where you are tuning in from we have overwhelming response for these sessions all right so all cool well, we have friends from Ipo, Sabah, KK, KL, Penang. Welcome. Yeah, so right now I think Penang is also under CMCO. So for certain area, I think Mukim 12, right? So take care for our friends here from Penang. All right, so disclaimer. Whatever we share on this webinar is only for educational purpose. In no way that I give any buy or sell signal for you to long or short any futures contract or any investment that you want to make so if you decide to do any investment decisions you do it at your own risk now uh Bursa Malaysia Derivative webinars uh, have you know we have concluded more than 10 I think this is probably the everything maybe a 16 sessions so we still have six more to go uh, for the entire year so for next Thursday we'll be talking about a session on uh, Bahasa Melayu, which is on concept pemikiran perdagangan yang berjaya. Okay, so if you want to learn more about this, so uh, remember to reserve your Thursday night for us because every Thursday night, usually on every Thursday night, we'll do a session on uh, uh, on futures. All right, so, okay, so it gives me great pleasure to introduce uh, David to you. Okay, he is a veteran, you know, industry veteran uh, in, in, in this futures uh uh, industry okay so he is a trader and managing partner of Exmodius trading group plt a consultancy firm specializing in bespoke trading strategies and coaching for private and corporate clients in the equity commodity derivative markets he has 24 years of experience in malaysia's listed derivatives industry so before starting his own consultancy david helm leadership positions in futures brokering divisions of major investment banks in malaysia so he served as the president of the Malaysian Futures Brokers Association between 2018 and 2019. As a fervent believer in trader education, David has spoken in seminars and workshops to over 5,000 retail traders on trading Bursa Malaysia derivatives as well as the CME, SGX and Hong Kong exchange markets. His work includes live market trading sessions and webinars. So he has also been a trainer for uh, licensed brokers for the continuing professional education program, courses of the Securities Industry Development Corporations. So David has participated as a panel speaker at international palm oil industry events such as POC 2019 and POTS India 2019. So it's as you can see, our, his background is awesome, all right? So today he is here and we are very proud to have him here uh, to share with you how you can use, how you can do risk and money management strategy. All right, with that, uh, I hand over the session to you, David. Thank you, thank you, Shane. Okay, um, so I'm gonna share screen. Um, okay, let me show you my screen. All right. Okay, you'll see my face again. But anyway, thank you so much, Shane, yeah. for the wonderful introduction and a big thank you uh, goes to Bursa Malaysia Derivatives as well for hosting and sponsoring this evening's program. I would like to thank all of you for taking the time to join this webinar and I hope everyone is keeping safe and taking good care of your health. Uh, friends in uh, Sabah, 
friends all over, all over Malaysia. Uh, I'm in KL, so KL also is uh, under strict orders as well. Uh, Penang Lang, I'm from Penang as well. Please take good care. Uh. Uh, don't run around hey, too much. I don't know you're Penang also people. from Penang. Uh. Yeah, I'm Penang people Penang. love to eat everywhere. <laughs> so, you know, so have to take good care of your health. Okay. Uh, that's uh, very important. Uh. Yeah, you need uh, good health to do good trading as well. Okay, so we have a lot of uh, information to share with you this evening. Uh, so if you have a pen and a notebook, it'd be good. Take it out. And we hope uh, that you will take back lots of good ideas uh, for your trading this evening. Okay, um, today will be a three part, uh, part three of my four part series on learning how to trade BMD futures. Uh, those of you who have joined me for the last two sessions, uh, you would have learned how to instantly read the immediate trend of the futures market. Uh, you also would have learned the ABC and the AO momentum method for setting up your entries and exits in the markets uh, for any time frame that you are trading. And uh, But for those who did not join the previous sessions, uh, you can still catch those videos uploaded on the LiveChem uh, website uh, and also uh, the Bursa website. I think details uh, will be given by Shane on those uh, links on how to uh, uh, link to all those videos that we are up, uh, uploaded. Okay, so today we are going to talk about a very, very uh, important subject. Okay, this topic, uh, uh, money, recent money management strategies for maximizing your trading results is extremely crucial. I think this session, honestly, if you ask me, is even more critical to learn uh, compared to just the trading methods. So this is what we will cover, okay? And three uh, main points tonight that we will cover is number one, learn about leverage and the critical understanding of the crucial role of risk management in futures trading, especially uh, because futures trading is a leverage product, okay? So it's very important to understand uh, risk management in these terms. The second is to understand the key measures of sound risk money management in trading. Okay, what are the measures? What are the things that you need to uh, look out for? Okay, how to measure your effectiveness when you are tra you are trading? And the last point is how to implement uh, a risk and money management strategy which is suited for your individual trading strategy. Right. So we're going to look at what is the game plan and putting it all together in the game plan at the end of this session. Okay, so let's uh, jump right into it. When we talk about building a trading strategy, normally there are three uh, ingredients. Okay, there is the methodology. Okay, methodology is something that a lot of uh, traders and a lot of people uh, want to look at because this is like, how do I enter the market at the best prices or how do I uh, get a method that gives me the best uh, probability of success in trading and all that. So methodology is naturally uh, something that uh, everybody looks at, okay, and everybody uh, uh, yearns to have a good one. And I think that's important as well, methodology. Uh, but if you see from this picture over here, um, you have uh, three large uh, oval uh, spaces, right? And uh, methodology is uh, uh, the smaller part of the oval uh, uh, space compared to money management, okay? Money management is, is, is uh, even a more critical element in the trading strategy. And of course, lastly, is trading psychology, which is a session we will, we will have in December to talk about trading psychology, which is a very, very important part of uh, trading as well, because uh, without trading psychology uh, settled, or if you don't have the correct mental uh, mindset, uh, you will not be able to implement uh, both methodology and money management. Okay, but in terms of trading mechanics and all that, money management is extremely, extremely uh, crucial. Okay, and we will see why tonight. So in terms of a optimal trading plan, I think this is something that we have to keep in mind uh, to keep things simple. Okay, simplicity in trading wins over complexity. Okay, and I want to tell you my experience. Uh, my experience is, uh, as a, uh, I, 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 I design algorithm uh, trading strategies uh, using uh, AI and all that uh, uh, for my own trading. Okay, and as I design many, many, uh, and I go through thousands, not thousands, maybe hundreds of uh, strategies. Okay, and uh, uh, the key thing is this: when we, uh, when I design these uh, algo trading strategies, I'm looking for a measure, and there's measure of complexity. I'm looking for the 
complexity uh, to be low. That means uh, that the, the, the strategy is simple, uh, not too many inputs and not too many conditions. Okay, the higher the complexity of even a program for trading and algo uh, algo trading the more uh, 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 less robust is that strategy and the simpler if i can get my complexity measured down i find that the strategy will be, be more robust and being able to last different different types of market uh, situations you know? so in terms of looking at trading uh, simplicity is very very important okay of course it needs to have a logical and rational approach there must uh, uh, your strategy must be thought through okay it must have some uh, logical and rational uh, what you call that approach to it okay you of course need to have clear rules for entry stop loss and exits okay this is a, a methodolo methodology part and most importantly you must be able to have a system that has a positive expectancy and later we'll talk about what is this positive expectancy right so bear in mind in 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 your trading if you find that you have been adding more and more com complexity into it more and more technical indicators you you are actually uh, 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 making your your trading more difficult okay and we will ad address also uh, complexity uh, when we talk about trading psychology because uh, it's uh, got to do a lot about uh, making decisions and if uh, you have uh, very complex decisions to make uh, uh, when you need to trade then you you you'll be very slow to react to the market conditions so very important to have simplicity and simplicity uh, wins always over complexity keep that in mind Okay, so the most crucial lesson in trading futures is this, okay, understanding leverage. And what is leverage, okay? Um, leverage is basically um, because uh, the, the exchange don't charge you so much margins. Let's say, for example, you want to trade uh, one contract of crude palm oil, okay? One contract of crude palm oil at today's prices. So today, crude palm oil, one metric ton is 3,000 ringgit. And one contract of crude palm oil is 25 metric tons. So the value of one uh, contract of palm oil uh, in today's prices is 75,000 ringgit. Okay, but the exchange says you want to buy or sell one contract of CPO, you don't need to give me 75,000. Just give me 4,005. That is the margins. So because the margins are low compared to the value of the contract that you're trading you have this thing called leverage okay so for those of you who have a calculator you can divide the 75,000 divided by 4,000 how many multiples of leverage you have right so you can see that leverage is quite high for trading futures and this is something that you need to take uh, 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 aware of be very aware of because um, leverage can work both ways okay uh, leverage can multiply uh, your 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 and enhance your returns, but on the other side, uh, like a double-edged sword, it can actually cut uh, you if you don't know how to handle it. So the risk from trading futures inherently lies in not understanding the negative effects of leverage. Right? A lot of people are excited about the positive effect of leverage. You know, the returns are so much higher and and so much enhanced, but they forget that you know. Uh, this uh, this leverage works both ways, right? So if you don't understand the negative effects of leverage, then you can be hurt, okay? So managing risk is actually about managing, number one, leverage, your exposure and, uh, uh, and your losses. And this is the key to successful trading. Okay, and this is leverage. Okay, just a simple uh, diagram to show you. It means that with a small, a smaller amount of capital, you can actually move a lot of of uh, exposure. So in terms of futures, it's highly leveraged. And uh, you look over here, one piece of stone can carry four or five big stones over here. Okay, so it's a very powerful tool. Okay, uh, but leverage is a extremely important uh, as well because it's a uh, very it makes your capital very efficient okay you can control a larger size investment with a smaller capital outlay and typically in futures trading uh, the amount of leverage is between 5 to 30 times so you can see it can be very very powerful okay what does it mean when you have 30 times leverage okay if you have 30 times leverage if your underlying uh, uh, product or asset you're trading, whether it's an index or whether it's coupon prices, if the underlying moves 
okay, your account or your, your money or your profits will move 30 times that if that is your leverage, right? So uh, can you imagine if uh, you, uh, let me show you an example next one, I think it make it clearer. Ah, so leverage how it works, okay? And this is a example uh, of uh, uh, using leverage uh, in the Malaysian FKLI contract, which is the uh, composite index uh, uh, futures contract traded on Bursa Malaysia derivatives. So um, here we compare between two persons. Okay, the first is a cash trader, right, who buys eighty thousand worth of Malaysian shares, right. In terms of settlement, uh, when settlement comes, he would have to pay eighty thousand for his share purchase, and this is what we call a cash purchase without leverage. Now, if you're a savvy trader and you know that there's this contract called FKLI in Bursa Malaysia, you can uh, go in and do the same thing very similar to the, the, the cash trader. You can go, say, for example, if you buy uh, the index say, at 1006, right? Uh, 1006 uh, uh, FKLI, if you buy one contract at 1006 points, uh, it will be equivalent to 80,000 notional value of a basket of KLCI index stocks as well. Okay, uh, uh, basically how you get the eighty thousand is you multiply uh, sixteen hundred times uh, fifty because one point is fifty. So sixteen hundred times fifty, you get eighty thousand. So that is the notional value of the shares that you have in your in, in when you're trading one futures contract. Okay, and what is the margin uh, needed? Okay, uh, it's approximately four thousand to have one position in the FKLI. So basically, you have equivalent exposures in the equity market, whether as a cash trader or as a futures trader. Now, this FKLI contract, uh, the 80,000 divided by 4,000 will give you a 20 times leverage, right? 80,000 divided by 4,000, you get 20 times. So what happens is this. If the equity stock prices were to go up by 10%, okay, both the cash and the savvy futures trader would have made 8,000, right? Both of them made 8,000 because market 80,000 worth of shares go up by 10, 10, uh, 10 both of both of you will make 8,000. Now the returns is very different, okay? The returns for the cash trader who put up 80,000 ringgit in cash and made 8,000 is of course he made 10%. But you as a futures trader, you only put up 4,000, okay? And then you make 8,000 8, in profits. So your profits is 200%. Okay, so this is a multiple, a 20 times multiple of the return, 20 times, times 10%, you get 200%. Okay, so this is the upside of leverage. Now, the question is this, what if the stock market or the, the shares uh, went down by 10%? Okay, that's a key question. Okay, if you are a, a, a cash trader, of course, uh, you lost uh, 10%, how much? You lost 8,000, right? Uh, the futures trader will also... Uh, uh, what do you call that? Uh, lose eight thousand, same, right? But you you can see here your your when you started, your capital was four thousand, and now you have eight thousand loss, right? So that's a two hundred percent loss as well. So in C, uh, leverage works both way. Okay, so the 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 key to trading uh, futures is how to control the risk and how to manage the leverage. Okay, this is a very key uh, understanding to have. Let's move on. So is leverage your friend or your enemy? Okay, so what are the pros? Of course, the pros, you know, uh, you know, smaller capital outlay, you can control larger amount of uh, exposure, uh, greatly enhance your capital, the better, higher the leverage, the more efficient use of your capital, and professionals know how to take advantage of this tool. So you need to be like a professional when you want to use leverage, okay? And if you don't know how to use it, you know, this is uh, what will happen. A lot of investors will easily overtrade. They say, wow, okay, now I have a capital of, say, um, uh, 80,000 ring. I can do 20 lots of FKLI, you know, uh, 4,000 each only. I can hugely make a big bet, okay? So you take on risk. You you overtrade and take more risk than you can actually afford, okay? And this will greatly multiply losses as well. You now you've seen if market goes against you and you don't know how to manage, you will greatly multiply your losses. And losses 
could go beyond initial capital. So this is something you really need to know when you are trading futures. Okay, this is something that you need to be aware. Uh, if you don't control your losses, it could go beyond your initial capital. Okay, but don't be afraid of it. You know, I've traded futures for a long time and I never had this situation because I knew how to control the leverage and my risk. Okay, so amateur investors or new investors who are ignorant of how to use leverage may make serious losses. Okay, so this today, this evening is a very, very important session for those who are trading futures. And for those who have already been trading futures, it's an important reminder on why it is important uh, to understand this uh, uh, risk management. Okay, so let's talk about knowing where to land before you take off. Okay, so before you go into any trade, Okay, the most important thing is you need to know about your exit. Okay, so before you take off your plane, you better know where you're going to land your plane, right? So you cannot like take off, then then decide to, oh, okay, and I, I, I now decide uh, where to land when after I have taken off. Okay, so where you land, which is your exit plan for your trades, is a very critical part of your trading plan. Okay, so if you're a captain of your trading, you must have your plan all worked out, okay, before you even start your engine and uh, fly your plane, okay. So um, there's always this quote, uh, which I think I forgot which is the famous writer, he trader, he said that money is made uh, not in when you buy, but uh, when you sell, okay. And any monkey can enter a trade, but money is made or lost when you exit it. So this is a very crucial thing, right? So you need to have your exit strategies all planned out uh, before you take on a trade, okay? And what are the exit strategies that you need all planned out? It's number one, uh, where, are you, where are you going to have your stop losses, okay? Uh, where is your targeted profit-taking area, okay? What prices are your targeted profit-taking? And uh, what are your exits? If the trade don't go anywhere, it's not, you know, it's not like going anywhere. Where, what do you do and when do you trade? No, when do you get out? Okay, if your 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 trade is uh, going nowhere, so these are the the three things and the three exit strategies that you need to have uh, before you actually put on a trade. But the most critical of all, the most critical exit of all is this thing called the stop loss. Okay, and I call it your safety airbag, right? So all the modern cars these days they have. Uh, a airbag, right? So all cars are equipped. I think it's mandatory to have airbags in your cars these days. So uh, what are the airbags for? Airbags are for in case, okay? The remote chance uh, or uh, you have an accident, the airbag will save your life, right? So a stop loss is a very important thing to have. And I would say that if you're trading, uh, whether it's futures or whether it's equity or anything that you trade, uh, you need to have this strategy. Right. So right on top there, you can see in bold uh, and in capitalized, do not trade if you do not have a defined stop loss strategy. Right. Uh, I'll say it again. Do not trade if you do not have a defined stop loss strategy. Of all the slides tonight, this may be the most important slide. OK, uh, so I, I will say it again for your benefit. Some people will say I'm Chong Hei or long winded. Do not, do not, do not trade if you do not have a defined stop loss strategy, okay? Why, why? Because not all trades will be winners, okay? Uh, let's be practical. Let's, uh, if, if every trade you go in, you win, then you don't need to be sitting in this webinar anymore, right? Because not all trades will be winners. We win sometimes. We make uh, trades that are not so good sometimes. So what? What do you do when, when you make some trades or the trades didn't develop as, as you expected? So the stop loss actually preserves the capital for the winners that will come, okay? So it's a very, very important as part of the strategy in trading is preserve your capital because you will have trades that will work, okay? And that time when you, you, your, your trades are working for you, you will need to have your capital. If you are not in a game, how can you actually the winners or, or make those uh, winning trades, right? So the strategy is this, every time uh, before you put an order or every time immediately you put a stop loss on every order that you give or enter in the market, okay? And you must know your exit before you even enter any trades, right? So before you actually trade, you must measure the loss or measure the risk that you're going to take in every trade before you even put it in. Okay, so once you put in a trade, you must put in that stop loss order. That means you need to activate your, your and put your safety airbag in place. 
right? So in terms of stops, a very general guide is to put your stop where the loss does not exceed two to five percent of your account equity. Well, two to five percent, uh, depending on your your uh, your ability to take risk, right? But even if you take uh, every single trade, if you're taking a five percent, five percent is actually on the high side of the range already. Right, so uh, you should work between the guidelines that you don't uh, risk more than two to five percent of your equi account equity on every trade that you take. Right, so that's the guideline for uh, putting stop losses. So, um, okay, a quick recap is uh, um, the last two sessions we talk about ABC trading systems and the AO systems. We, I won't delve too much on this. I'll just put them a reminder where to put your stop loss uh, placements. So you have this buy signal trigger and sell signal trigger. Okay, you pick where to put your, uh, uh, I'll show you graphically. Okay, this is where you put your stop loss. This is where you buy and then you either put your stop losses at A or C minus one tick. Okay, those of you who are not familiar with this ABC trade signals, go back to those uh, two uh, videos that we did uh, the, the couple of months back and go and have a look. Um, I already put in that in those uh, slides where you put your uh, stop losses, where you control your risk. This is just a recap for those uh, to remind them. Okay, this is a recap for putting stop loss in the uh, trade sell signal. Okay, I won't spend too much time on this because we already covered this. And this is also for the AO momentum trading strategy, where to put your stops. Okay, you have the stop loss one and stop loss two. Uh, um, which is basically putting your uh, stop loss one, one, two ticks below the reversal wave bottom. And then uh, for the stop loss two is to put it one to two ticks below or above the AO signal bar. Okay, all those details on putting stop loss or AO is also in the previous uh, video. So please go back and have a look at the video and see how we can do this. So buy signal, this is the graphical, uh, graphical uh, what do you call that, uh, representation of those stop loss where we spoke about for AO. This is the buy signal and where to put the stop loss. And these are the sell signals and where you put the stop loss. Okay, so we have a lot to cover, so I won't, uh, I won't uh, go and uh, delve too much on this. You can refer back to the uh, signals uh, and the stop loss placement in the previous videos. Okay, uh, another idea I want to share with you is this, uh, using ATR for placing stop loss. This is a good uh, method to sort of gauge or measure uh, the amount of stop loss uh, you uh, you should put, okay? And uh, this is an indicator. ATR is uh, called average true range, and it's an indicator developed by J, uh, J. Wells Wilder, and uh, it's actually a measure of volatility. Right, so uh, large ranges of ATR indicate high volatility, and small ranges indicate low vol uh, volatility. So, uh, but uh, ATR is not an indication for price direction; it's just for volatility. And uh, ATR uh, was a, a a basis of stops. Um, this turtle trading system, uh, this very famous uh, turtle trading system, those of you who have not heard of it, it's a, a good to check out and read this legendary story of how two uh, top traders train a group of uh, uh, what they call turtle traders, uh, which is actually their disciples, uh, to become top class uh, uh, traders in the world. And uh, this uh, uh, turtle trading system, they use ATR as a form of stop loss. And their guideline is they typically use two times the ATR. And later we will see in some of the methods that we'll talk about later, uh, how to use this two times ATR. And uh, two times ATR is actually quite a viable stop loss level. And you will see that even when you're trading AOs or ABC, ABC system, when you put the stop roughly, the guide is about two, two times the ATR. Right, so we will go in and talk about ATR uh, later. Okay, now I want to talk about drawdowns, and this is very, very important. Okay, and it comes to drawdown, what is drawdown? Basically, when you're trading, okay, so in this uh, chart on my right and on your right, you can see the trading account size, which is the money that means your profits, okay, or your trading equity, and then uh, this is the number of trades. Now, in every trading system, there will be this thing called drawdown okay and if you are developing trading systems uh, or you've been in trading for a long time you've heard of this uh, uh, people will ask what is your trading system drawdown okay it's either uh, represented in uh, 
the absolute amount of money or in represented in percentage okay say so basically basically drawdown is from this peak to this bottom what is the measurement before it picks uh, makes a uh, back a new high so these drawdowns are very typical uh, happening when you're trading uh, when you're trading uh, uh, in in trading is very very common you will see your equity won't go up in a straight line it will have its ups and downs okay and hopefully in a good trading strategy uh, the 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 downs or the uh, drawdowns are, are as shallow as possible okay and then you have this up uh, trending uh, equity curve right uh, so uh, drawdowns are normally calculated between the difference of the relative peaks and the relative troughs troughs are the bottoms okay and um, Drawdown is really a part of trading, okay? And the ability to handle drawdown is very, very important because drawdown is the pain part, you know, the losing streak part, okay, in trading. And uh, this is where uh, your trading psychology will be tested, okay? But being able to handle the losing trades is what actually separate the successful traders from the ex-traders, right? And when it comes to drawdowns, the most important key element is the risk management. Okay, if your risk management is solid, okay, your risk management is 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 uh, is uh, what do you call that uh, 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 very very robust, then you will be able to survive the the drawdowns. Okay, and the other uh, part of uh, drawdowns is you need to have enough capitalization. A lot of traders go into the futures market and they hear that you no know, futures market um, because of leverage you can have very good returns. They they tend to feel that hey you know I just start with a very small capital and try out. Okay, um, in trading you need to have enough capitalization. Okay, because with a uh, uh, good enough uh, capitalization, you will be able to use another part of the risk and money management, which is called position sizing. And that's one of the critical uh, uh, elements of making your trading uh, more effective and your results more effective, right? We'll see later what this means. So you need to be well capitalized, okay? So some people say, hey, you know, um, I, I don't have enough capital yet. What should you do? Okay, um, you either downsize to trades on, on, uh, on, on where you take smaller risks, okay, you downsize to maybe trading uh, on day trades because the, the sizes of your losses are less and the risk that you take is less. So we'll talk about those strategies afterwards, right? So capitalization is something that you need to be very clear. You need to have enough capital uh, to trade. Okay, and, and I'm going a bit ahead of myself now by saying that one of the key uh, things about trading psychology is uh, scared money will not make money. Okay, so if your capitalization is not enough, okay, basically scared money, nah, this money cannot lose, one, nah, you will have trouble because your trading psychology part will not be sound. Okay, so this is something that I will, I will cover in, uh, in December, but just um, to say it now. Let's move on. Okay, so now we're gonna cover the money management concepts, okay? How to right size your exposure on your trades. So um, this is a book that I will highly recommend. This is an old book. I read this um, in the, the mid-1990s. Um, they've got uh, newer versions of this uh, with uh, other people that uh, they interview. But this is a book by Jack Schrager. And uh, Jack Schrager went around to interview all the top traders during his, that time in the 1990s and the 80s. And uh, these were all the people he spoke to. Okay, I won't read out the whole list, but you can see that all of these people are very successful uh, traders. They traded in futures, uh, they traded in stocks, uh, they traded in uh, uh, treasury bonds. Okay, uh, this Paul Tudor Jones is a very famous uh, fund manager, hedge fund manager. He averaged uh, triple digit returns for five consecutive years. It's an amazing record. Okay. At Seikota, uh, amazing returns over 16 years. Bill Lipschut, all these guys, basically, when Jack Schrager went to interview them, he was asking basically the same questions to all these uh, successful traders. Okay. And one of those questions is like, you know, um, I've spoken to all different, different types of traders. They all trade different methods. They have different styles. Some are very aggressive. Some are very conservative. Now, what is the key? What is the key uh, uh, concept of all these traders? All the key, uh, uh, all the best traders in the world 
have this thing called risk and money management, especially money management. Okay, they all adhere to a very clear program of risk and money management. Right? And what are these money management concepts to understand? Okay, these are the few things that you need to understand. Number one is position sizing is the key factor in money management. Okay, position sizing is how much or how big of a position to trade or take. Okay, so how much capital is at risk on each particular trade? Okay, these are important considerations. Okay, the exposure that you you expose yourself every time you trade. Okay, the second part to measure is about uh, the expectancy of your of your trading system. Okay, and uh, normally it's measured by these few critical crucial measurements. Number one is the win loss ratio. What is the win loss ratio? The win loss ratio is your average winning trade in 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 currency in dollars or in ringgit divided by your average losing trade in dollars or currency. Right. So in terms of looking at the guideline, uh, a win loss ratio of two suggest a robust trading system or method. If your method can give you a win-loss ratio of two, that means if you win, you win an average uh, win of two times your average loss. Okay, that means if you make, just to make it simple, if you make, you make 10 bucks, and if you lose, you lose five bucks. That's two to one, okay? So this win-loss ratio is a key thing to look at. Okay, and then the other uh, measure is called profit factor. It's very similar to win-loss ratio, but profit factor is the gross profit. That means the total gross profit of the winning trades divided by the gross loss of the losing trades. Okay, so a profit factor of 1.5 above suggests a very robust trading system. So these are measures, win-loss ratio of two, a profit factor of 1.5. Now, the last measure is percentage win or uh, percentage profitable and this is something that a lot of people tend to think of only okay in isolation and uh, that would be a mistake to ask that hey if my trading system have a 60 percent win rate or 60 percent profitable rate is it a good trading system that is only half the equation okay so uh, later we will see uh, because the top two win loss ratio is is even very very important okay and this needs to work together the win loss ratio and the percentage win needs to work together right and we'll see how it goes okay now i want to share with you a trading system okay you don't have to remember this trading system you can read about this trading system in uh, this book called ryan jones i've uh, put down here ryan jones the trading game playing by the Numbers to Make Millions is a Wiley and Sons book, a very good book on trading. And uh, in his book, he introduced these trading systems. Uh, but his book is actually talking about money management uh, systems, okay? But he's saying that he has de developed this uh, trading system, okay? He put there, uh, these are the rules for buying, okay? And there's these factors here, X days and Y days, okay? Which he didn't review what's the X days and Y days, okay? This is the buy rule and this is the sell rule. Okay, and uh, he says that basically the X and Y days are not so crucial because after he has tested various combinations and X and Y days, it seems that his results are quite consistent. So those of you who are interested to go and test out what this trading system is, you can go and test out various variables of X and Ys. Okay, but I want you to show you the results from this RJ Ryan Jones trading system rules. Okay, and we want to learn uh, money management and the measures of money management using this system okay and these are the results he traded eight different commodity markets or futures markets using this uh, this system okay and these are the results okay so the first tabulation is he traded bonds with it okay and these are the results of his trading he had a net profit of 92,000. Winners is 30 over 48 losers. So his winning percentage is 63. Okay, now let's just focus on these two measures. Okay, winning percentage, which is the win percentage, and the win loss ratio, which is the average uh, profit uh, divided by the average loss. Okay, so in terms of bonds, this RJ trading system had a win percentage of 63% and a win loss ratio of 3.29. Fantastic. Okay. When he traded Swiss francs with this system, it got a winning ratio of 56% and then a win loss ratio of 2.19. Well, not bad because it's above two. Okay. Let's go on. He traded crude oil with this system. He got a win uh, percentage of 59% and a win loss ratio of 2.8. 
very good. Okay, win-loss ratio above 2.8. And then he traded wheat with this. Uh, he got a winning percentage of 57% and then a win-loss ratio of 1.93%. Okay, this was probably the only one that went slightly below 2, but 1.3 is still a very respectable uh, number for win-loss ratio. Then he traded 10 yen, these are treasury notes. He had a winning percentage of 60%, a win-loss ratio of 2.92. Also very, very good. Okay. And uh, he traded Japanese yen with it. He had a winning uh, ratio of a winning uh, percentage of 57%, uh, win-loss ratio of 2.6. Very good. Uh, above two. Now for Deutschmark and Euro dollars, you see. Winning percentage 63%, 2.6, win loss ratio, win percent for euro dollar 57%, and win loss ratio of 2.02. So when you all aggregate it up, this is the combined results of all eight markets. He, of course, made money. He made a half a million uh, dollars on this. His win percentage was averagely 57%, and his win loss ratio was 2.8%. Now, I want to draw your attention to this uh, box over here, okay? And uh, let's talk about what is called a break-even system, okay? I won't even say this is a break-even system. This one, I think, um, throw a loser, okay? Lose to who? Lose to the broker because of your slippage on your brokerage. Okay, a break-even system is a system where your winning percentage is 50%. That means you make half your trades and you lose half your trades. Okay, in terms of your percentage. And then your win-loss ratio is one. That means you make you made ten dollars, you lose, you lose ten dollars. Okay. I'm sure you can understand by looking at that system who is the winner. Okay. Uh, the winner will be uh, where you lose is all the slippage in brokerage, exchange fees, and all that, right? So this system, if you have a system that makes 50% win percentage and only wins one to one, then this is not a very viable system okay you will lose in terms of the of the um the slippage okay now what is a very good system okay a uh, very good system this is a measure and these are the numbers that normally quoted uh, for those trend traders and all that they have a win percentage of 40 percent okay these are top traders huh? yeah 40 percent uh, long term okay and they have a win loss ratio of two okay that means out of uh, 10 trades, they will make four trades, profit, uh, for, uh, profitable trades, and six non-profitable trades. Uh, but every time they make a profit, they'll make it two times the average loss. Okay, So we're saying that this is a good guideline. A very good system will have that. A win percentage. Okay, Some of you may be surprised to find that win percentage is even below 50. Okay, Some of you might think that I need my win percentage above 50 to make a Make it, make it good or have a good trading system, but you forgot. You need to remember that the win-loss ratio here is very important as well. Now, an almost holy grail system. That means this is, wow, this is a very holy grail system. Um, people would define a holy grail system as something having a win percentage of 50 and a win-loss ratio of 2.5, right? Now, this is like holy grail already. But let's look at, go back to RJ trading system and see what his win percentage is. It's 57%, okay, which is uh, above this holy grail system and a win loss ratio of 2.8, which is also above this holy grail system, right? So if this excites you, perhaps you should go and test out the RJ trading systems and play with the variables of X and Y, okay? So uh, almost holy grail system. Uh, is only this, right? So for those who are shooting for 80% win percentage and all that, it may be a game that where it's it's uh it's uh you're chasing the wrong uh wrong uh what do you call the end of the the tunnel, okay? Um, because the almost holy grail system is win percentage 50% and win loss ratio 2.5, and uh, I've uh, been doing a lot and lot of uh, of uh, iterations of uh, tr uh, trading strategies using uh, uh, the AIs, and uh, <clears throat> what I realized is this: besides these two numbers, okay, and and this is an insight I want to give you. Okay, what you do is you multiply. Okay, you take these two. Uh, numbers and you multiply it. Let's say, for example, win percentage of 50%, okay? So 50% uh, is 0.5, okay? And then you multiply it with by the win-loss ratio, okay? So 0.5 times one, what do you get? You get 0 0.5, okay? This measure is quite important, 
Okay, if you multiply these two figures, so a break-even system will give you a multiple of 0 0.5. So you know that if you have 0 0.5, it's not that great. Okay, things are not looking that great. So in a very good system, okay, what is the win percentage? 0 0.4 times the win-loss ratio 2, you get 0 0.4 times 2, you get 0 0.8. 0 0.8 is a very good system. Okay, a holy grail system. A win percentage 0.5 and win loss ratio 2.5. Okay, so if you multiply uh, 0.5 times 2.5, you get 1.25. So 1.25. If you can get the numbers of these two multiples at 1.25, you are having a fantastic, fantastic system. Okay. Now, what if you have a win percentage of 0.3? Okay, 30%. Okay, so you need to have a better win loss ratio. So these numbers, these two numbers will always balance out. Okay, so if you can achieve a multiples of 0.8 to 1.25, yeah, yeah, and if your measure, if your system measures that way, that means you have a very good solid system, right? So this is an insight uh, to give to you, and these are the two uh, very critical measures when it comes to money management. Okay, so let's go and look at uh, position sizing. Now, when we talk about position sizing, let's uh, let's take a hypothetical trading system. And uh, this trading system is a coin flipping trading system. Okay, so uh, you basically take a coin and flip it in the air a hundred times. Okay, and each time the, the coin lands on head, you make two dollars. Each time the coin lands on tails, you lose one dollar. Okay, so what's the win loss ratio for this uh, game or this uh, simulation of the trading? So it's two to one. Okay, and suppose that we accept the probability that uh, having heads or tails is 50 50. So you have this particular system has a win percentage of 50% and has a win loss ratio of two. Okay, so we uh, we flip these coins. Okay, and we see what's the results if we play this game uh, 100 flips. Okay, so 100 flips, you have 50 flips that uh, land on heads, which you make $2 each. You times 50, you have a net gain of 100. And you have 50 flips on tails, which you lose $1 each. Times 50 times, you lost of 50. And then you have a net gain after 100 flips of $50, right? So if you were given an initial sum of $100 to play, and you put $10 on every single flip of the coin, after 100 flips, you would have made 500. Not bad, right? Uh, uh, in fact, very good. You put in 100 and then you made 500. That's uh, fantastic. So uh, can the deal be even better? Okay, it can be, right? Because so this is simulating a trading system. Now we are going to add this thing called position sizing. And this is what we're going to do. Okay, we are going to play it very differently. Same amount of capital, same game, same returns and all that. Okay, but let's see the results. Okay, we are going to vary the position sizing. Okay, there are four ways we can do it. The first way is we put 10% of our total account size on each flip. The first time we played, we put $10 each on each flip. Okay, but now we're going to vary it. A is a method where you put 10%. B is a method where you put 25% of your total account each flip of the trade. And C is 40%, very aggressive, of the total uh, of your total account on each flip of the trade. And, and D is even more aggressive, 51% of the total account on each flip of the trade. Now, if you do this, what would be the results? Okay, remember in the first game previously, okay, we made 500 and we said, wow, 500, not bad. With a starting capital of 100, now you have 500, okay? But if you position size, if you do it differently like here, A, if he, he played it 10% of the time, after 100 flips, his 100 dollars will turn into 4,007. Uh, this is a huge difference, right? And for B, when he puts 25%, after 100 flips, it's 100, will turn into 36,100. Who would have imagined that playing this kind of game, okay, uh, $100 can become $36,100. Okay, that's amazing. And all you did different was just to change the size of your position. C, very aggressive after 100 flips, turn 100 to 4,007. So you see, 
uh, it doesn't mean that it, the more aggressive you get, the better it gets. There is a optimal level. And in this particular example, it looks like 36,000 uh, is the, the topmost maximum return, and that's 25%. And D, when he put 55%, of course, at the end of it, he only he lost 31. So too aggressive, also you lose money, and uh, there's an optimal Okay, and uh, for this particular risk reward ratio and for this uh, win win percentage, uh, it's 25%. Okay, so if you have position sizing and you add that into your system, okay, you can turn even a very a, a normal mediocre system into a very very good system. So that is where position sizing comes in, and it makes a very profound difference in your trading results. Okay, so in position sizing, you have two main schools. Okay, you have this thing called Martingale and anti Martingale. Okay, these are uh, strange, uh, maybe strange uh, terms to use, but those who have studied game theory or those who have studied um, um, casino gambling or casino games will, will understand what's Martingale and anti Martingale. Okay, Martingale, I think, is something that a lot of people understand. Okay, uh, basically, it's up as you lose down when you win what does that mean it means that let's say for example you you play a game okay uh, a betting game and then you played uh, one unit uh, and you lost okay a lot of people naturally the next bet will be uh, two units okay they double up okay and then if they lose again they double up again okay and they lose again they double up again you know? so one becomes two become four we've done 16 uh, and and so on and so off so so this is a is is a concept if you use this in trading or even investing, uh, it's gonna spell trouble. Okay, and a lot of people use it in the market actually. Okay, and uh, it's very familiar. Okay, when uh, they make a trade and they lose, they double down. Okay, they, or, or otherwise known as averaging down. Okay, are you familiar with this word averaging down? Averaging down is called is martingale. Okay, and uh, in the long run, especially if you're trading uh, uh, leverage products, is a recipe for disaster. Okay, so I. I don't encourage you uh, to use Martingale uh, type of uh, position sizing for uh, for trading. It's not recommended for trading. Okay, you may play some games with it, but then it's really not recommended for trading. Okay, for trading you have to use what we call anti Martingale, right? Which means you up as you win. That means if you make profits, you increase your sizes. Okay, and down as you lose. That means you reduce your exposure if your equity is uh, is, is you are losing money. Right, so you only increase exposure on profits, and this will give you what we call geometric growth. Okay, geometric growth where you earn more, you're earning more profits, and that what you can achieve with a single contract. Right, so if you're just trading single contracts, uh, like the guy who was uh, playing ten bucks per game, compared to the guy who was putting uh, either ten percent or twenty five percent, there will be very different results at the end of that 100 flips of coins, okay? So this is a anti martingale is optimal for trading, okay? Uh, of course, depending on what sort of account size and growth expectancy, you uh, you will see the growth of your account. So go anti martingale for trading, uh, don't do the martingale, okay? So these are the concepts uh, for position sizing. So let's talk about two. Okay, we are going to go into a bit of mathematics, so I hope you bear with me. Okay, uh, for those who uh, aren't, uh, can't get it, don't worry, you still have this to refer to in the video and you can slowly go through it. Okay, most money management system, uh, 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 a lot of uh, people use this thing called fixed percentage money management. It's very popular and especially for professional traders to use this, uh, especially people who trade uh, uh, large capital uh, uh, large account sizes. Okay, that's why a lot of professional use, traders use this system. It's very conservative. Okay, uh, but for people who have very small account size, maybe it's a bit slower, right? So those with small account size may not like the, uh, like this system because it's very conservative. Okay, uh, what this system does is it limits your losses to a fixed percentage of your account balance, which just now we're talking about is between two to five percent of your account balance, right? This is what they are, your limits we are talking about. Okay, so here I'll give you an example of how to calculate uh, how many lots to trade using this fixed percentage money management system. Okay, so basically the number of contracts is about your fixed percentage uh, account, uh, fixed percentage uh, account limits. Okay, let's say for example, if your account balance is 30,000 and you say that 5% is my uh, limit, my fixed percentage uh, limit, 
So 5% is 1,005, okay? And if my individual trade risk is 500, that means let's say if I trade one contract of uh, FKLI, and if my one lot risk is 500 uh, ringgit, then I will take uh, my account balance times 5%, which is 1,005, divided by 500, which is my individual trade risk, and I can trade three contracts. So is that uh, understood? Because the individual trade risk um, is the risk take, taken per trade. So what this fixed percentage money management system does for you, it's it tells you how many contracts you can trade. If your 5% uh, risk limit is there, okay, and your individual trade risk is 500. Okay, so in terms of this system, you can calculate your exposure by using this formula. And for this particular example, it's three contracts. Okay, let's see whether we have another one. Okay, here's another example. And uh, current, uh, the account balance is 50,000. Let's say, for example, it started with 50,000 and you're trading the KLCI and uh, you assume that money management stop is 10 points, which is 500 ringgit. So your individual trade risk is 500 and your fixed percentage money management system limits is 5% of the account balance, okay? So here you do your uh, calculation. So with 50,000 ringgit of capital, how many contracts can you trade using the fixed percentage money management uh, system, okay? So in that case, you look at it, it's five contracts, okay? Using the formula, uh, it's five contracts. Now, what if your account balance dropped to 45,000, okay? There is some losses and from 50,000, it went down to 45,000. So when you run the, the formula again, okay, uh, based on this, you become 4.5. So you, to round it down to four contracts. So you see, if your balance in your equity goes down, you actually reduce your exposure. Now, what if your account balance rises to 60,000? You make some money, okay? So how many contracts can you trade? Using the same formula, it will calculate for you and it's six contracts. So you can see the principle of the anti martingale over here. If you lose money, you reduce your exposures. If you make money, you increase your exposures. Okay, so that's fixed percentage money management for you. There's another system that uh, uh, some people may prefer. Okay, it's uh, more suitable for smaller account sizes, but some some is debatable. Okay, some people some people prefer this. I use this personally. I like this. Okay, uh, it's uh, uh, don't worry about the formulas. The formulas you can slowly look at the slides later at your uh, at your leisure. Okay. So uh, basically, what the fixed capital money management says basically it says that for every lot of uh, trade, you need to have a certain fixed uh, capital. So fixed unit capital, let's say for example, if it's ten thousand ringgit fixed unit FUC, your fixed unit capital, then if you have your account size of thirty thousand, you only trade three contracts. Okay, and the formula for the FUC is over here. Okay, we, um, you can see over here, I'll give you an example. Okay, in the next slide. Okay, say for example, you're trading crude palm oil. Okay, and uh, the FUC will require you to have this figure. Okay, uh, if you have a measure, you need to have a system drawdown measure. And in terms of this particular measure, one of my systems, we have this uh, 9,000 uh, uh, system drawdown measure, okay? You input it into the formula, okay? And I'm assuming here account balance of 10,000. And uh, you have this thing called blow torch risk as well, okay? What is, what is blow torch risk? It's basically as a trader, how much risk are you willing to lose? That means uh, how much money are you willing to lose? And in this example, is 50%. That means if I lose 50% of my capital, I need to stop and relook at all my trading strategies. So I'm putting this input as 50%. So my FUC is, is drawdown divided by blow touch risk, which is 18,000. Okay, what does that mean? It means that for every 18,000 ringgit of capital that I have, I can trade one lot of uh, CPO because this is a CPO drawdown of 9,000. Okay, for this particular system. So I will only increase one contract for every 18,000 increase in my account balance. Okay, so this FUC. So you have a choice between using the fixed uh, 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 fix capital money management or you can you have the fixed percentage money management. These are the two popular ways of using uh, money management in terms of uh, uh, measuring and, and counting what is the exposure that you should put 
on every tree. So I recommend that you um, explore these two uh, methods. Okay, um, go back and look at the videos again and and see which one works for you. Okay, so in terms of a summary of money management guidelines for trading, the first key important thing is preserve capital. Okay, we are trading a leveraged product futures. So the key is preserve capital and this will be your key to survival and prosperity. Most importantly, survival. If you can survive, then you can prosper. Okay, always trade with a stop. Okay, I'm not going to be long winded here again, but then uh, always trade with a stop. Okay, risk no more than 5% of your trading capital on any trade at any one time okay calculate your win loss ratio aim for two or more if you can okay use position sizing remember to increase sizes in profits and decrease sizes in loss okay and this will ensure geometric growth don't do the other way huh? don't do increase your size when you're losing money okay only increase your size when you are in profits and then we come to the objective of trading okay basically is to win more trades than you lose and achieve profit margins on the winning trades that will be larger than the losers so this is the key money management concept and if you can do that the cumulative effect of doing all this above is your pot of gold okay so this is very 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 important Okay. I also want to share with you this chapter of uh, Shunzi, The Art of War, Chapter 4, uh, which basically says that the good fighters uh, put themselves first beyond the possibility of defeat. That means your money measurement is so rock solid. Okay, All you're waiting for, okay, and in Shunzi it said, is waiting for the opportunity of defeating the enemy. That means the market will give you those profits. The You defeat uh, uh, the enemy is like making profits in in the markets okay so to secure yourself ourselves against defeat lies in your own hands okay having your risk management having your stop losses that particular uh what you call that strategy lies in your own hands okay and the opportunity of defeating the enemy is provided by the enemy itself okay i'm not saying that the market is an enemy but that's where the market will gives you the profits okay so thus the good fighter is able to secure himself against defeat and this is very important to be able to secure yourself against defeat is to have a very strong and robust risk and money management system in place right so uh, after having all those things of course you need keep uh, you need to keep statistics uh, if not how are you going to measure your win loss ratio and your win percentage right so uh, stats to monitor to monitor at the minimum and these are the minimum stats you need to uh, to measure uh, and keep records of the number of trades of course the ratio of winning trades uh, which will determine your win percentage the average profit per winning trade the average loss per losing trade okay and then calculate your win loss ratio which is av divided by al to see whether it's one half or two times the higher above two times the better and also, uh, also look at what's your maximum equity drawdown measure. If your system goes into the drawdown, what is the uh, equity drawdown? Okay, so these are the minimum uh, stats that you need to monitor when you're trading. Okay, I know this is the dreary part of the trading, okay, keeping records, uh, but it is a very important part so that you know uh, whether you're on track on, or on a good uh, risk and money management system that you're implementing. Okay, so to put it all together, in a futures trading strategy okay the first one is the determine your starting capital and we said that uh, start with enough capital so that you can uh, you can do position sizing okay so you need to ask yourself what's a good starting capital okay you also need to of course look at what size of contracts you're trading if you're trading things like uh, cpo or fkli uh, per contract it's about 4000 to 4005 uh, capital needed per contract so you need to look at your particular amount of capital that you have and uh, also the capital you have will determine what sort of trading time frame okay um for uh trading time frames if you trade longer trading time frames if you trade daily charts uh, of course if you trade weekly charts uh, weekly charts is of course too long uh, i feel daily chart is as long as you can get um, if you hold positions, then when you hold positions, then you need to have more capital because your stop losses will tend to be larger and the absolute value will be larger. 
Okay. After you determine your starting capital, uh, your next in your game plan is to determine your trading methodology. Okay. You may have already got your trading strategy. If you don't have, then check out the ABC method or the AO. I will recommend that you have a look at that. The third thing is then determine your risk and money management. Okay. So for example, um, if I'm trading FCPO and I, I use ATR as my guide to my uh, to my stop losses where I put stop losses and uh, it's interesting to see this uh, FCPO ATR is uh, something that I did I think two weeks ago and I was looking at the daily ATR daily ATR of 80 points what does that mean that means the FCPO on average the high low the range for the day is 80 points and this is a lot okay so 80 points is 2000 ringgit so um, there's a lot of potential for profits. There's also potential for losses if you don't take care of your positions. So this is something that you need to take care. The ATR for 60 minutes is 30 points. So if you're trading 60 minutes charts, um, the ATR is 30 points, which means it's 750, the range of the uh, 60 minute chart. Okay, And the range for the 15 minutes chart is 15 points, which is 375. So if you look at this ATR and then you say, okay, a guideline to my uh, guide to my protective stop loss is two times the ATR, then you can actually measure what is the risk. So if you're trading 15 minutes charts, okay, your two times ATR stop is also three, uh, 375 times two, okay? So that's uh, uh, quite some money as well, okay? Something to consider. Now that's because the um, PAM or FCPO is very volatile. Okay, so if you think the FCPO is too volatile for you, then you can look for a, a, another contract. Perhaps look at the FKLI, which the ATRs are uh, less aggressive, right? So that's one way to determine what contract to trade as well. That's very important, right? So um, just looking at the uh, the FCPO uh, example for for you to uh, for for us to look at the game plan. Okay, a lot of you are already familiar with this slide. This is the contract spec slide. So the margins is 4,005 currently for trading one contract of FCPO. So, so in terms of looking at the futures trading strategy, this is how it could be. Let's say for example, um, I have a starting capital of 30,000. That's what I have to start. Uh, I pick a trading methodology. So I say I trade uh, ABC intraday method because the intraday uh, range is so good. So I also don't want to take too much risk. So my trading time frame I decide is 15 minutes. Okay. Uh, what is my stop losses? Okay. Um, 15 minutes uh, is 3 cent 5. So two, two times ATR is my protective stop loss. This is my this is my airbag. It's 30 points, which is 750. Okay. So it is quite high as well. Okay, my contract margin is 4,005. So uh, what else do I need to do? Now I need to put my money management, uh, what do you call that, uh, game plan to uh, play. So I have 30,000 ringgit. How many contracts should I trade? Okay, so if I take uh, individual trade risk, we're saying that two ATRs, my individual trade risk. Okay, I'm using a fixed percentage money management system with limits set at 5% of my account balance. So 5% of 30,000 is 1005 so with 30000 ringgit individual trade risk 750 number of contracts traded will be 5% times 30000 divided by 750 i trade two contracts okay so using the fixed money management uh, fixed percentage money management systems i trade two contracts with 30000 ringgit uh, if my account balance drops to 15000 then i'll be trading one contract if my account balance rises to 45000 i will be trading three contracts Okay, so that's how the game plan goes. So each step of the way you have your trading, your capital, your method, your money measurement, and your risk all put down. Okay, so these are the minimum things that you need to have in place before you actually start trading. Yes, you have your trading method, you have your methodology of entries and, and exits, you may use AO, you may use ABC system, but then you need to have this particular uh, things, uh, game plan uh, for money measurement in place as well before you start trading. Okay, so yeah. Okay, this is just a continuation. Okay, and where is your profit target? Okay, so profit target, we say that uh, we want to have our profits uh, two times our stop losses. So if our stop loss is 750 ringgit, then we would have our stop, uh, our profit target try to get uh, two times that, which is 1,005 or 60 points. 
Okay, so that's how you plan your profit target as well. So yes, so we've uh, come down to Q and A session. Um, uh, there are lots that we have covered. Uh, there are a lot of mathematics as well. So for those who are a bit, uh, a bit uh, part, what do you call that, uh, blur because of the mathematics, don't worry, go back to this the, the video again uh, when it's uploaded and relook at it. So now we're gonna take uh, questions. I'm gonna go back to Shane. Shane will moderate the Q&A session. Back to you, Shane. Yes. Thank you, David. Well, today we have a mathematics and statistics class. Huh? Okay, so as a trader, um, especially in the leverage products, as we have uh, the speaker have put across the point very importantly to you, is that risk and money management is very important. Okay, so we must know exactly what are the win loss ratio, what the percentage winning, and what is the profit factor, and know how to do a position sizing so that we can uh, have we can have a solid trading system that can be profitable for us and build our first pot of gold or many many multiple pots of gold <laughs> okay personally i am uh, my background is in uh, mathematics and i also believe in all these mathematic numbers i believe in facts and mathematics so i am also a big believer in all this system all right so let me see what are the questions you have okay david what is yes, percentage sir. time in DD? Is asked by Kevin. Oh, did I have a percentage time in DD there? Yes, correct. In the case studies, yes, you, you put in the percentage time in DD. What so the, what does that mean? Wait, let me <laughs> just go back to the slide. Um, yes. Which slide is it? There are a few slides, I think, on case studies when you were going through the case study of crude, uh, crude palm oil or, uh, or wheat or uh, Swiss oh, franc. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, DD is drawdown. Percentage of time in drawdown. Because I noticed yeah. that sometimes the number is quite large, like 60 over percent. I mean, do you mean that? Uh, okay. Like 56 percent. percent. That means uh, DD is uh, DD is drawdown. That means uh. Uh, it's uh, let's say for example the Deutsche Mark, right? You see over here, okay. Uh, that means this particular system for Deutsche Mark, the RG trading system, spent 56 percent of its time in a drawdown. That means uh, it was uh, the drawdown means losing money, okay, 56 percent of the time, okay. okay and I, for euro dollar, you can see 64 percent. I so the E is drawdown. Don't really understand because you see the percentage winning is 63 percent, right? Yeah. If out of 100 trades, 63 percent are winning trades. Then, how does that relate to 56 percent? Okay, in, in terms of drawdown, right? Uh, and we saw this now in the drawdown figure. It, you need it, see when you measure drawdown is from the peak, the hill, the peak of the hill, and to the bottom of that 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 the, the valley, right? So in terms of climbing back from the valley to back to the hill, you still have uh, the winning trades and losing trades and winning trades and losing trades, right? So once you have that, once you go back up above the hill, then you are uh, uh, you're out of drawdown, okay? So that a percentage of time is that measure of time you stayed between that peak and the the bottom of the valley before you get back to the peak again. Okay, I understand what I mean. Yeah, so yeah. you have to yeah. be higher so it's a measure than of the time. previous peak. Huh? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So you still will have your your winning trades and losing trades in between. Okay, but uh, this percentage of the time you will so spend the lower the number, the better it is. Uh... Yes, yes, the lower then right. you have, uh, yeah, you don't spend so much time in drawdown. Okay, I hope okay. that answers the question. Yeah, you know, when I graduated, uh, I am always fascinated with all these numbers. So <laughs> the, the next question is, uh, could you explain again, what is the difference between win loss ratio and profit factor? Mm, okay, now over here you can see. Let's look at the Deutsche Mark. Okay, so a win loss ratio. Win loss ratio is taking your average win. Look at this Deutsche Mark here. Average win three thousand four, and average loss thousand three. So when you divide three thousand four by thousand three, you get the two point six. Okay, so that is the win loss ratio. Now profit factor is taking all your gross profits, which uh, you don't have here. All your profits all the profitable trade all the total you add together into one gross and all your losing trades you add together the losses total losses and total uh, profits uh, you take the total profit divided by the total loss you get the profit factor 
ah, which is 4.5. So here I don't have a gross. I don't have gross. Yeah, so profit factor is gross profit divided by gross loss. Everything that you made on all the trades and everything you lost on the 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 what on the losing trades. So that'll give you your profit factor. So you okay. look at this profit factor for Deutsche Mark 4.5 is extremely good because anything above 1.5 is, is already a very strong system. All right. The next question is, is your strategy in terms of money management and uh, risk management applicable to other uh, markets such as stocks and Forex? Hmm. Okay. Um, obviously, um, all these are uh, evergreen ideas. Uh, this uh, 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 applicable to all types of uh, uh, trading. Okay. What you need to do is you just need to tweak it a bit. For equities, is a bit different because you're tra trading shares uh, in amount of share value. So uh, it's slightly different. You need to tweak it, but the principles and concepts behind it is the same. All this about net profit, winning average, uh, average win, average loss, and all that is it's uh, it's the same. It's just that uh, the the way shares traded uh, compared to futures, futures is by per contract basis, whereas shares is by exposure in dollar terms exposure. Okay, so that needs a bit of tweaking. Um, if you like to um, look at uh, shares trading, the type of money management, I would recommend uh, books by uh, Ventap. Okay, Ventap has very good good uh, books on, on money management when it relates to uh, equity markets as well, right? And uh, so other books that I recommend you to read is uh, Ryan Jones, this person uh, is named that, and also Ralph Vince. Ralph Vince is a very famous uh, writer on uh, money management as well. So these authors, if you check out, uh, uh, you will be able to get a good idea on using it on equities as well. I hope that answers your question. Yes, it, is, yeah. it applies to all. So David, you are certainly a very well-read person, huh? <laughs> uh, that's my passion. Okay. Trading. Okay. The next question is, if it is value investing for a horizon of 10 years for stocks on Bursa Malaysia, what mm. guidelines do you think can apply for the money management and strategy? Okay, um, investing and trading are two different types of uh, ways of making. Okay, so um, the first thing is you need to differentiate what is investing and what is uh, trading. Okay, so investing can be a very different uh, method. Okay, because investing uh, uh, considers that you are buying for the long term, holding this particular asset, uh, say shares, okay, for the longer term. You have various different uh, uh, areas of uh, making money, uh, things like dividends and all that. Okay, so um, in terms of investing, we need to uh, uh, differentiate between investing and trading. Uh, trading is more for the shorter terms. Uh, trading your uh, expectant, your your expected uh, 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 returns are perhaps a bit more uh, aggressive compared to investing. Uh, investing, if you can get an average uh, compounded annual return of 22%, uh, is already very, very good. If you can exceed 22% a year long term, you already beat Warren Buffett. So uh, it's a very, very different way of uh, investing money, right? Uh, for shares, I do investing, okay? Uh, but uh, uh, for trading, I use futures, okay? So for shares, I, low, I, I usually trade long term. Um, I'm a situational trader. I look for uh, uh, times in history, uh, when everybody says that shares is something that you should avoid, then I'm always in there when, when they say that. So uh, the rest of the time, I, I put my time into futures. So um, you need to look at your time frame, your expectancy of your return and all that, because investing and trading will be different. Okay, uh, But then uh, certain of those concepts that you see tonight, like the risk management and all that, is also good. Uh, for uh, value investing as well, okay? So uh, even in value investing, I think um, if you pick, say for example, you do an analysis and you find that this particular share or equity is very uh, uh, undervalued and you see a very good buy in it, uh, sometimes some of those trades don't uh, don't uh, work out, 
Okay, so uh, you ask yourself in terms of your money management in value investing, do I put a hundred percent of my exposure all into one particular uh, share? Okay, so I think you can answer the question pretty well after tonight. You don't, right? So, and also, what is my downside if this share is not performing? And now it's uh, there must be a certain point where I say that you know I need to quit this share because it's not working, right? So even in value investing, okay, uh, although it's uh, it's not as um, uh, intense as trading okay you still need to have these considerations of uh, risk and also how much exposure each particular uh, value shares or, or, or value investing shares that you want to put in your portfolio i hope that uh, helps to answer the question definitely there are a few questions that ask if you can write down the book titles that you have just mentioned maybe david mm. you want to create a slide and write it mm. down because i think this show is more memorable <laughs> oh okay um where do i write down what's the best place to write down i mean you, um, I mean, you can exit the uh, full screen then mm. you create a new slide and then you just oh, okay, write okay. It down. okay okay yeah while okay. i write down maybe you can uh, the, we can get to the the other question okay sure Okay, I can write down here. And, uh, okay. So Do you want to take the next question, or I wait for you? I uh, know. Yeah, <laughs> I can take the next question. I can. Uh, I can. Worried you will be think while I. This, uh, yeah. yeah. Worry that you will be this uh, distracted. <laughs> All right. So since we are talking about risk and money management, what is your advice in terms of? money allocation for equity market, bond market, gold future option trading with expectation of 20% annual return? Oh, that's a very big question. Um, I wish I can answer that question uh, uh, thoroughly. Okay, Asset allocation as in what is... Uh, uh, I think that's uh, too big a question for me to ask in terms of this topic tonight. Um, yeah, so... Uh, it's a big question. Uh. It's so multifaceted that it's in, impossible to answer properly. So uh, I, I would, um, I'm sorry, I, I would have to avoid this question. It's just too, too okay. big of a question. Yeah, if okay. you don't mind. Understand. Yeah, this All is right. a fund manage, fund manager's uh, question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Maybe you can find uh, David Yamcha. Okay, then maybe you can uh, yeah. spend two hours. Okay, to 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 dissect each market for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's take this the other question. Okay, I've written down Ralph Vince, uh, Ryan Jones, and Ben Tap. Uh, uh, you just uh, Google these three writers, and you put uh, money money management next to it. You Google money management, and all the books uh, the right uh, would uh, come up. Uh, these okay. are the the main uh, the main people that uh, uh, I re reference to in terms of money management. Okay. okay. Uh, can they can see, right? Yes. Yes. You can see. Uh, okay. So these are the three writers that were recommend that you start Ralph your journey. Ralph in... Ryan Jones and Van Tharp. Van Tharp. Yeah. Are they Americans? Um, I think so. <laughs> okay. Yeah. American authors huh, and traders. I think so. The next question yeah. is is by um, uh, Albert for stock index. The liquidity is quite low. I think mm. she, I think he refers to futures. Okay, uh, mm. stock index futures. Liquidity is quite mm. low. Sometimes less than eight thousand contracts per day. Mm. Is this normal? And how can BT traders mitigate this? Okay. Um. For eight thousand contracts a day is still a tradable contract. Okay. Um. But if you look at the uh. If you look at the FKLI, it's just that it's stuck in the range for such a long time. I can bring out the chart actually, and you will look at the. Um, um, okay, I'm waiting just a second. Okay, this is a uh, palm oil. Um, if you look at the chart for FKLI, it's been stuck in a range for a very long time. So as the market gets stuck in a range, uh, you will find that uh, the FKLI. See, it's stuck in this range. Only the last couple of days, is this is the hourly chart, okay? But if you look at the daily chart, 
It's been stuck in a range for such a long time since uh, September. Okay, it's stuck in this this range here. So uh, for a while, people have found that it's it's quite difficult to make money because it's stuck in this range. So uh, the interest is lost. But then once it breaks this and the things start to move, then it will get active again, right? Um, um, also uh, depends on how big you trade, uh, Albert. If you are trading uh, less than twenty lots, I think uh, um, eight thousand uh, traded. But, but they still is a tradable contract. Yeah. So um, for FKLI, it's it's a bit seasonal when the 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 uh, what do you call that uh, the trades go. Let's let's put in a indicator of volume. Let's have a look at the volume. Mm. Eight thousand is still tradable. Mm. When I started the business in FKLI, um, one day only fifty lots. <laughs> <laughs> so, so eight thousand compared to when I first started is a way, way uh, a lot as well. Okay, so this is the volume. Okay, yeah, this is the volume. Yeah, so volume here thirty four thousand depends on the day, lah. Yeah, depends on the the high volatility, the the volumes will go up. Yeah, um, the last couple of days, I think volumes have gone up a bit as well. Right, so um, yes, uh, average of eight thousand is still tradable, but you can see here um, because it's stuck in the range, so it makes it difficult. So people kind of uh, lose interest. But uh, for FKLI, once uh, once the uh, what do you call that, the activity starts again, then you see the the the, the trades will pick up. Okay, and the bids bids and offers for FKLI is also still very good. So in terms of liquidity, uh, being able to get in and get out of the FKLI, it's still very very healthy. So I hope that answers Albert's uh, question. All right. Um, the next question is, David, just now you mentioned about position sizing, and mm. uh, we, we see that the aggressive uh, strategy has yield a very negative outcome, whereby not only you don't, uh, you you mm. uh, actually uh, lose money. Okay, your hundred dollar mm. become thirty one dollar. Yes. So. Would you recommend that because we see that the expectancy for the uh, moderately aggressive, which is 25%, you bet 25% of the total account on each flip, you yield mm. 36,000 out of mm. the $100. So mm. would you recommend that you know we do 25% instead of like 3 to 5% risk? What do you think? Okay. Um, if you recognize uh, this particular trading system and if you recognize the 25%, uh, 25 percent is actually the Kelly's uh, theorem. Okay, that's Kelly's formula for the optimum exposure for this trading system. If you input all this uh, uh, data, the win percentage and the win loss ratio into Kelly's formula, you will get 25 percent. Okay, uh, but Kelly's uh, uh, money management system, or even the evolution of Kelly's system, which uh, Ralph Vince went to uh, evolved it into optimal F. Uh, which is still considerably very aggressive. Okay, it's too aggressive uh, for trade uh, for trading, mm -hmm. and you have very aggressive drawdown that you cannot survive. That means uh, if you use 25%, you have drawdowns that you you won't have enough capital to trade anymore, right? So in terms of looking at 25 25%, that's way too way too uh, aggressive. Right. So 25% uh, you put it into a trade. Uh, if four trades you are uh, consecutive trades wrong. You are basically um, you out of the game, right? So that's why um, maximum even at five percent is on the more aggressive side of the range. Uh, so in terms of the exposure you take uh, for every trade, so it's advisable to uh, put yourself uh, between two to five percent. Okay, uh, you can go aggressive in an, in another way where let's say for example if you are in a trade, okay, and you've got some uh, buffer in profits that you have already in the trade, then you can increase your 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 uh, position size without increasing your risk. That means the stop loss if it uh, the, it doesn't work out. If let's say for example you multiply you pyramid upwards, that's what you call pyramiding up, increasing your size as you make more profits for that particular trade. Yet your stop loss and all that is still within that two to five percent then that's all right okay so that is when you you catch a good trade and then you want to maximize it you add in more trades but then your risk still remains the same okay that's the that's the way to do it if you want to be more aggressive rather than take a more uh, risk in terms of the absolute stop loss you take more risk because you have buffer in your profits and you can you can increase your size because of the profits that you have I hope that answers the question. Okay, so for this Kelly system, uh, mm. 
because it tested out with all this 10%, 25%, 40%, does that mean that her system has a better risk to reward? That's why they can turn uh, $100 to 6000 Uh No, because uh, the Kelly system, let's say, for example, if you lose money on the 25%, you can go down lower and lower. Let's say, for example, you started with 100 then you lost 25%, then it's 75, 20, 25%, 25% of uh, 75 it's a lower figure. You can infinitely go down, you see, a quarter of it. But in trading, you cannot, once you get down below 4,005, you cannot trade anymore, right? Uh, so uh, it, it doesn't, it's very different in terms of this particular game, right? Because this game, you can go lower and lower. There's no like, uh, if it's, uh, you have 20 bucks left in your account, you can't trade. But in futures, it's like, okay, less than 4,005, you cannot, you see. So that's uh, that's where the limitations and where uh, Kelly will get stuck. Okay. Hope the next question, it. which I think is the last question, is um, when when you do trading, uh, will you take into consideration of fundamental factors when making trading decisions? Mm. Um, yes and no. Um, you, it's good to have a fundamental view uh, of uh, say for example for palm oil okay if you're trading palm oil and you're in a certain kind of position uh, the fundamental views will sort of kind of support uh, 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 your view and see whether uh, your 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 particular position is in in sync with the market fundamentals mm -hmm. but i don't use fundamentals uh, to trade okay i just see it by the wayside is something that i can and, and see what's the background and what's the landscape uh, of my particular trade Okay. In fact, um, uh, and going in even deeper into trading, uh, my trading tends to go into a more money management than even calling the direction. More importantly, is uh, uh, am I uh, correctly positioned in my money management? Okay, for this particular trade. So in terms of direction, so long as I'm in sync with the market, either ABC or AO, I'm in sync with the trend of the market. I'm okay. Okay. So I'm not so invested into whether. My particular view is uh, in synchrony with the uh, market fundamentals because fund market fundamentals can be very long term, right? It can be month and it can be a year uh, kind of thing. So I'm trading, I'm trading intraday. So I'm a very small fraction of that year long fundamentals. So today may be different to me, tomorrow may be different. So in that time, kind of time frame, uh, fundamentals doesn't help me. I hope that answers the question. Definitely. Okay, so I guess uh, our time is up. So let me introduce you to our next webinar, which is on the concept Pemikiran Pedagang Yang Berjaya. Okay, so if you want to join these sessions, which will talk about uh, the building the winning mindset of a successful trader that will be conducted in uh, Bahasa Melayu. So it is happening next Thursday, 8.30 to 10 o'clock. So I've just given you the registration link. So if interested, uh, please uh, register yourself for this session. All right. So uh, before we leave, just want to highlight to you that we have post webinar survey for almost all our future sessions. So just respond to our survey and uh, we will pick six lucky respondents to win this touch and go e-wallet reload pin worth 50 ringgit. So just answer our survey and then we will pick six lucky winners to walk away with the 50 ringgit uh, touch and go e-wallet reload pin. So the survey will be launched after this webinar and will be sent also sent to you via email. So lucky winners will be reached out within a week. Yeah, so that's about it. So uh, thank you so much, David, for joining our session today as uh, a guest speaker. So I'm sure that all of you here have learned a great deal about mathematics, about probabilities, and about how to build a successful trading system and manage your own risk and money management. We cover quite a bit of the technical part of money management, such as win-loss uh, win ratio, profit factor, winning probability, those, those numbers that you must know inside out. Okay, we also cover a key concept of being in trading is you know, first learn how to survive first. Okay, must put your stop loss. Then if you know how to survive, then you'll be able to prosper. Okay, so this is what David put across the point. Very powerful uh, to us today. So thank you, David, for sharing the idea. So we'll look forward to hosting you again. 
yeah, we look forward to hosting you again in December. So for those of you who are interested to join David's session where he talked about psychology of trading, so stay tuned for our upcoming emails. Okay, so when, when you receive email from us, from our company or from uh, my name, Shen Zhu, okay, please remember to open and also, uh, you know, maybe save my email address in your calendar or in your uh, uh, email server so that it won't go to spam. Lah, huh? With that, thank you so much, everybody, and may you have a pleasant rest of the day. Stay safe. Bye-bye. This is Shen Chu signing off. Bye-bye. Bye, David.